Okay, we're getting into the very final stages now of uh, this presentation. So this is the sixth part of the House T 3ds Max 2020 visualization series, uh, and the, we finished the last one. Uh, we left the the scene rendering. This was a 10 minute render of the of the upper floor scene, and if we compare that to the previous version we'd, we'd copied we cloned the render frame window um, so if we just bring that back you can see just how different these two are once we've got materials and the longer render time gets rid of the graininess and we've got a bit more life in the floor now as well we've got reflections and we see the bright area reflected in the chair and the uh, edge of the doors and the likes so you know night and day in comparison if we compare the two okay so it's useful having this render frame window you can just see how much kind of progress you're making so I'll close that now I can't retrieve that once you've closed it okay so the image is finished rendering and this would be us kind of winding up the project okay now we've used quite a few bitmaps along the way for the and you don't want those to go missing because if you try and open the scene again later on you may find that something's missing and you can be uh, in a bit of trouble that way so one of the very useful utilities is via, via the utilities tab the more button and it's called resource collector okay and what this does it pulls the, the JPEGs that you use together into one place. So what we'll do is we'll take the JPEGs and the max file. Okay, now we haven't actually saved this max file yet, so we haven't given it a name, so uh, we better do that. So let's just save it first. So we'll save as, and I'll plop it on the desktop and just, just call it uh, house T. Well, house T finished. Okay, and save. Okay, now let's say I wanted to pull everything together into one file, one folder. So the bitmaps and the max files. Browse. I'm going to look to my desktop, and I've got a folder sitting ready that's got nothing in it. I'm calling it maps. Okay, use path, and then begin. Okay, let's have a quick look into that folder. Okay, I'll close those to look on my desktop for the maps folder and everything that we've used is now together. So let's pretend this is uh, the start of another day and we've closed Max and we decide we want to come back to this project. We need to tell it where this folder is. Okay, so that it can use it can find all the files without worrying. Okay, so let's let's pretend we've we've finished. Uh, what we'll do is just uh, uh, I'll just do a new new all. Just clear the screen. Okay, so the first thing I would do is customize configure project paths. Okay, then the external files tab, and I want to add to this. And this is where I point to my desktop. Oops, double click there. Should have just done a single click there. So let's modify that one. So it's desktop, maps, use path. Okay, click OK. And then if we go to that folder to open the max file. Okay, so let's find the maps folder. House T finished. We shouldn't get any error messages about missing JPEGs or missing bitmaps. It's found everything, it's ready to render again. Okay, that's just a bit of kind of file management. It gets very important. The more projects you do, things do kind of get a bit out of hand sometimes. You know, if you're not working from the same place all the time, um, you need to keep a close eye on where files are going. Okay, so that's that's kind of pretty much everything on the max side of things for this one so I'm just going to close max and 
go to Photoshop now. Okay, so I've got, uh, I'm not giving away the location of the house T. Uh, I did promise um, the architect that I wouldn't give away this location. So this is, this is a, a street scene in Miyazaki, but not where uh, house T is. Okay, and we're gonna use this as a background image. We'd only be able to see a very small part of it because the, the window that looked out into the street was actually quite small and we only had half of it. Okay, well let's pull up, let's open the render. Okay, so we've got living space .tf. Okay, now we'll go to the channels tab and you'll see there's an alpha channel there. If you click on alpha one, okay, it shows you that this was all solid. We couldn't see through any of this objects, but we could see out this window. Okay, so what you do is you load that channel as your selection, click the letters RGB, then layers. Okay, we want to cut the foreground from the background. So it's Control X, Control V. Okay, so we've got control of the, the scene. So what we want to do now is squeeze the background image, the street scene, in between the two. Okay, so I'll just leave it sitting on the background just now. Go to Untitled, Control A, Control C, back to here, Control V. Okay, so I can see something's happening in the background there. I've just got to try and get a bit of the building, well, to give the impression of the building across the road. So I'm just going to move this across, and I just want to get a little peep of the edge of the building across the road. Remember, this is a first floor window, so we kind of need this window to be at eye level as well. So that's that's about right, I think. Could be a bit bigger, could be a bit smaller, but that's just giving a hint of something outside. Okay. Now that would need to be a bit lighter. It looks a bit strange being quite dark there. So it'll be image, adjustments, brightness, contrast. So just really brighten that up. Okay. Now we can make things look a little bit more artistic here. Okay, if you make a copy of the top layer, okay, and then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, okay, and put a pretty high blur level on that. So around about the eight or nine level, okay. Okay, and then we'll blend that with the layer below, okay, and if you try screen or linear dodge, okay, screen probably works the best, okay, but it doesn't have to be that strong. You can reduce the opacity of that layer and it will weaken the effect, but give you that nice kind of ethereal, really bright, hazy, sunny day kind of appearance. Okay, layer two could possibly go a little bit lighter even. So we'll just make that a little bit brighter. Okay, and that's your finished image. Okay, save that as a PSD, as a TIFF again, or flatten the whole lot, save it as a JPEG, and do what you need to. Okay. I hope that's been a bit rushed in places, but if you follow this along with the the uh, PDF that's in the the, the description area, uh, I think you'll find that's a, a useful kind of starting block for your uh, endeavors with the 3D Studio Max and the ART renderer. Okay, thanks for watching and see you next time.